In this second video, I meet up with Ian Hodgson. Ian Hodgson's a trained landscape architect, but he spent most of his life working as an editor. In his garden, he shows off brilliant salvage. Then I meet Adam Kaplan, who's written books on salvaging junk and how to repurpose it. And finally, I meet up with the Wombles, who collect unwanted items and then they give it to good causes or they sell it on. This Peterborough garden is owned by the editor of the RHS's The Garden magazine. Ian, you've used salvage in this garden in a very different way to many people use it because you've actually integrated it as part of the overall structure. Yeah, that was uh, something I, I wanted to achieve, but uh, in using salvage, I want to see uh, items of salvage used in, in, in unusual ways and, in, in, and reinterpreted in, in many ways. What do you think are your most successful finds that you've gotten incorporated into here, the most fun bits? Um, I've used Steel Hawser Cable uh, as the serpent, uh, and that weaves in and out of the grasses that I've uh, planted. Uh, I've also used some closed tidies uh, that uh, we'd uh, grown tired of and brought them out into the garden, and there we have Adam and Eve. They look horrendous, don't they? Very good indeed. They're real fun. They're real fun. Your micro meadows in those salvaged barrels. They are fantastic. Tell me about those. I, I just love experimenting with plants and uh, I, I wanted to create a meadow in a pot. Uh, and so I, I, I grew a, a range of annual plants, grasses and flowers, and put them together. This magnificent bench that we're sitting on, tell me about this. Where did you get it from? Well, it first appeared at uh, Chelsea Flower Show in 1992, uh, where it was a great hit. Uh, and afterwards, it found its way into my garden. Yeah, we have to turf it periodically uh, and we have to water it and manicure it, otherwise the turf actually gets a bit tatty. And I must say, it's extremely comfortable. It, it is. You get a bit wet in the case. It's a damp at times, I'm sure. And the other, another item that I love is that door. Um, when I saw that door um, in a uh, salvage yard, I just had to have it. It was so big and huge, and I knew the place that I wanted. I wanted it at the end of the garden as the main vista. And another feature I love is your table over there, because that is so easy to do, isn't it? And such a clever idea, and it works beautifully. I actually saw it in a company's yard, uh, and he knocked on the door and asked, asked them whether I could actually have it. And they kindly said, yes, if you can find the transportation, take it away, because we would only dispose of it. And it is just one of those reels that you put cable on. It's a cable drum, Cable yes. drum. I'm always finding new things and I get tired of others. So I'm always constantly renewing uh, what I do and, and what I've got in the garden. And uh, the garden just changes all the time. And that's what, you know, creating garden is all about. It's a process, it's an evolution. Salvage can also be used to provide a bit of valuable extra growing room in the garden. Adam Kaplan is so obsessed with junk, he's written a book about planting it up. At his North London home in Highbury, Adam fulfills his passion for turning rubbish into one-off plant pots. I call the garden junk paradise, and um, over here are some of my junk babies. Sad, but they're my junk babies. Um, this is an old olive container. And the important thing is to try and match up a plant that's going to look good with that colour. And this aubergine, which... Um, it's a lovely plant, floppy leaves, but also has this um, wonderful fruit, uh, which goes, I think, really nicely. What I like about wine boxes is that you have names like um, Chateau Montus. It's, it's got a feeling of class to it. You know, I've got a chateau here in my little um, junk garden. And then slightly more extreme is stuff like this digger, which uh, it's a boy's toy, really. Um, I, I just love diggers, <laughs> it's just, and it's got lemongrass in it because it loves the moisture. Um, you can't really dig, you can't really drill drainage holes in something like this. So this actually thrives in that container. And this is an example of um, a tomato, well, yeah, I guess it's self-evident, but it's the tomato tin with the tomato in it. And I just think that looks right. It looks like you're growing the right thing in the right container. 
thing about things like tea chests is that they're huge and they're really good for growing bigger plants. Last year, I grew courgettes in this. This year, it's sweet corn. Next year, who knows? Um, when you find a really good source of pots, and I love these reds and these greens, I keep on going back there. And uh, he now has a little sort of doggy bag for me. And every time I go in there, he's got two or three more of these. I think in my area, people are now used to me going around, groveling around for any old sort of junk and seeing me in skips. And it's just, that's what I enjoy doing. But there are a lot of us. I think there are a lot of closet junk hunters. I think it's great fun. I think everyone should give it a go. At this council tip in Newham, East London, they've taken the idea of salvage to the extreme. As the public rubbish pours in, volunteer wombles sort it out. Chief Womble. Now, I thought Wombles were furry, but you're not. No, I'm losing my fur by the day. So what is a Womble? Uh, a big furry creature that makes good use of the things that it finds. And so you have got, is it totters rights? You're allowed to take all this stuff? Yes, Newham Council have given us permission to remove anything that we find that's reusable. And what do you do with that? We give it off to charity groups, community groups, to the public. Anybody that wants it, really, so that we don't have to put it into landfill. So how do the public get access to it, she says? Well, they come down on weekends normally. We, the place is inundated with the public tipping their stuff. Of course, one, one person's rubbish is another man's treasures, really. Um, and they'll, as long as you've got your checkbook with you, you know, we'll, we'll take your money and... Uh, I make an offer. You yeah. can't refuse, yeah. and then I can have it. Yeah, we haven't got a set price for anything. You know, it's all about donations, really. And if I said to you, oh, I really want something like sinks, troughs or something like that, do you We haven't it? got it. We'll find it for you. Really? Yes. If we, you know, we'll, we'll keep you on a list and uh, as, when it comes in the door, we'll put it aside and give you a call. And I bet everyone asks you this, but what is the best bit of treasure you've ever got here? The best piece has yeah. got to be Louis Vuitton trunk. Uh, about 1850, it was, it was made, manufactured, and um, it made... I think the highest price for a Louis Vuitton trunk, which was a couple of thousand pounds. Gee, and that came in under a pile of baked bean cans or something? Yeah, it? it just came in on the back of a truck, was thrown off and we picked it up after it had been pushed up by one of our big shovels. Give me some good hints for garden salvage. Garden gates. Um, Get lots of those? Lots. Through the summertime, hundreds. Uh, over the course of a month, probably two, three hundred garden gates. Um, railway sleepers, large pieces of timber chimney pots, uh, garden slabs, slates. We get all sorts of stuff. Okay, this is some of the stuff we found today, Bunny. What I love are those fantastic columns. Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Complete with the ornamental cast iron, isn't it? Yes, yes, cast iron. Early, uh, probably at turn of the century stuff, you know, a colonial fronted house, that sort yeah. of thing, yeah. Yeah, I can just see those in my garden. You imagine painting them up in a different colour. Oh. Imagine they would look quite nice. Plants around them, maybe a bit of gold leaf on them or something like Indeed. that. Maybe make those into a seat. The brackets at the bottom would make the base for a lovely seat. It would they? indeed. Sort of thing you'll see in a, in a reclamation yard with a, a big price tag. Oh yeah, lots of money, lots yeah. of money. But we're not lots of money. How much would you want for those? Twenty-five pounds, are you, Bunny? Twenty-five for the pair. Yes, that's good value, isn't it? A Fantastic value. Absolute deal of the day. It's great to know that the Wombles are still here and with us and doing a fantastic job pulling out magnificent things. Yes. I love it. Alive and kicking, yes. and will be for some time to come and still pretty furry. Marvellous. So I hope you've enjoyed those two videos on reusing junk and salvage and making the most of all those extraordinary things that you can find.